I'm so honored to be sitting here today with Aaron Rimbui, the amazing jazz maestro, such a wonderful artist. I've known him for such a long time, seen him perform, but unfortunately, I've never sat down with him for a conversation like this. Hi, Aaron. I'm good, uh, man. Finally, after all these years, uh, we get to, to chat. And so it's, it's good to be here and uh, talk to you. Thank you. And by the way, thank you so much for enriching my taste in jazz music. I feel like jazz music is very instrumental. It's very much a live experience. And if you don't experience that and only listen to it and not actually experience it in real life, you're still missing out of the whole jazz experience. And to be honest, I got to learn of jazz music and enjoy jazz music because of people like you, Jacob Basile, um, Jun Gashui, and many others here and there like... Um, Eddie Gray, there's this other guy from Uganda, he's so amazing. Isaac Atumwa. Yes, Isaac Atumwa. Like, you are the legends when it comes to African jazz music and global music. Like, you guys really wrote it down. And thank you so much for that. Oh, yeah, it's been an interesting journey, you know. Uh, instrumental music is not, uh, it's not as commonplace. Because, you know, uh, when, I, when I stepped out to be an instrumental artist, I actually started out as a keyboard player. I played for Susan Wheel, you know. Eric, and I, I played for everybody, you know, yeah. but I always like just to play by myself. And I like the thing about jazz that makes it jazz is to, 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 the, the, to be able to improvise. So a lot of the stuff that we play, yes, you've got a song, but the song can morph itself into whatever you want it to be. So, and that's what basically our music is. African music is improvised. And jazz itself was brought to the U.S. by Africans. You know? Okay, so does it mean that if I started to play some music um, with some other instrument and you're here with your piano, you could start to improvise? Absolutely, absolutely. That's that, and that's what I like about jazz. We can mesh ourselves into any anything. Any Jazz is the only type of music that can mesh itself with all other musics. So many jazz players, you'll find them playing with rock musicians, them touring with country musicians, because we can play anything. Because and it's because of the ability to improvise. Because you know, when you meet someone else with a, who plays a different genre, you need to understand their language so they can speak the same language. So we find ourselves having learned very many other langu music languages, and so that's why I like it. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, before I continue, I'm just looking at you and wondering when this man never ages or changes. What are you drinking? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, like from the first time I saw you, Aaron, I swear to God, I'm not even lying. We can call everybody and ask them. You never, you have not changed one bit. You're that man. Like if you, if, if I saw you at the age of 35 or 40, you are still that age to me right now. Yeah, I turned 42 three weeks, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. So uh, I think it's jeans, probably it's jeans. But I also, uh, I, I purpose to take care of myself mentally and physically. So I like. Yes, we go through stress. I've been, I've been, uh, I've got stories to tell about yeah. the things that I've been through. But I just, uh, one of the things, let me actually tell you that, that has helped me, is that I try not to be bitter with life. Okay. I've realized that bitterness shrivels people. Like when you get hurt, and it's true, there's some things that can happen in your life that are so crazy. And people can hurt you in ways that are insurmountable. So yeah. it's not, it's a personal journey. But for me, I've learned just not to, just to, let those the things that I can't handle, I'm like, I can't handle. So probably that's what keeps me young. I don't know. Maybe. Probably. Maybe. But, but I'm always, but I like, I like vibe. Me, I'm so my vibe. Like, like <laughs> vibes, good vibes, you know? Yeah. So yeah. talking of good vibes, thank you so much for the EP, oh, Bald Men Love oh, Better, yeah. that just dropped today between you and your longtime collaborator, BNA Mace, uh, Baraza. So tell me about the coming of this project. Um, when did you guys actually put it together and what else is coming from you too? I am aware that you guys um, have worked together before. Um, you were part of uh, the making of the original Kuliko Jana by Sauti So. Uh, you're part of their tour. You toured with them. Um, you also did another song with BNA in 2016. It yes. was called Nisawa. See mama. See mama. Yeah. yeah, so um just tell me about that journey from the time you met BN in Saudi so till now. Like did you ever envision like you would come together with such a um, wholesome project? I think let, let, let me briefly say that the first time I saw I, I met Saudi Soul was at actually Eric Quinina's wedding. I was coming in for sound check. Yeah, they were performing there. Yes. And so I didn't know of them. That was like early 2008. That's like going to 14 years ago, you know. Yeah. So and 
And I'm like hearing these guys, and I, I go up and ask Eric, like, why? Who are these guys? So like, oh, I've visited some young guys who who, who have just showed up, and and immediately the first thing, because I'm quite particular about my ear is always open, is always like listening. And I'm like, these guys have something. I'm like, and so from there I wanted to introduce myself, and and since then I've been, I'm a fan, you know, like before before working with them, I'm I'm just a, I'm, I'm a real deal fan of Saudi Soul. And that's and, and it's through that that now we event, eventually ended up uh, meeting and collaborating. I've been on their their album. Been, he's been on my Bian has been on my on my record. And actually, that record that you speak about is uh, an album I did called Deeper that came out in 2016. But we recorded it six years ago. That is 2015. And um, the and I thought that I needed Bian for that tune because it just sounded like something he's gonna do. And it's interesting that when we did this Bald Men Love Better, he says that the day he walked out of that session, he's like, you know what? I'm gonna, we're gonna do something. And not a song, but we're gonna, in his mind, he's like, yeah, we'll do something in time. Yeah, and that in time is six years later, yeah. And so we, we just vibe. We're like, Bian is a musician's musician. You know, yes, there's the, there's, there's a side of, of Bian that we all know. He's a singer. He's, you know, this hot, sexy guy that, you know, big, big artist, one of the greatest vocalists of our time. But people, speaking as a musician, you just don't realize just how good that guy is. He's, he's way up there. He's such but a... In what sense? Um, I mean, in, in, in songwriting? And just even the skill of music itself. Like, he has it, you know. There are those people who are like, yeah, but he has an exceptional gift. And so for, so for me, I'm always drawn to that type of, once in a lifetime talent. So for me, this record, I'm like, even, I'm like, wow, I want an album with Bian, you know? <laughs> and so, so I'm, it does, and, and even how we do it, how we did it is just how my relationship with him is. We just vibes. Met at his place, Bian, Ben Solo was there. I went, I was still holding my bag when I went and sat on the piano and started playing a, some chord changes. And Ben Solo seated there and he came up with an, interesting hook line now that day uh bn was going for some function yeah. so as he was going upstairs to go get dressed he started singing a line we actually told him don't go shower yet come let's at least put that on voice note and we wrote one song complete that day but not we had not even thought about the album so it's the next week, I think, after I listened to what we did, I see a couple of missed calls, like, hey, are you doing one, how long, do you want to do an album? I was like, absolutely. Now, the thing about this record is that we did it in a very interesting way, which is an old school way of doing things, where we recorded the bulk of it live. So it's live instrumentation. So like, and we played it not like the way someone comes in the next day and plays drums. No, we actually played it live. So a lot of the vocals that you're hearing being singing, it's it's right there at the moment, so that's how we captured it, and and, and I, th I think that's what uh, makes makes the, the the album so special because we it's it's also a moment that was captured, and we did that in about a, the whole record was conceptualized on a Monday, Friday we we're done, and so so we 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 hadn't set out to do five songs, so we had done four, but a couple of months because now I went back to to NYC and then. He was like, but we don't have uh, a title, a song that talks about what the title was, which was Bald Men Love Better, which was for me like an interesting, because he's the one who came up with that title. <laughs> the Bald Men Love Better was him. That was not my idea. But you, but you're like, I'm bald. Oh, yeah. um, I accept it because <laughs> I know I love yeah, yeah. better. <laughs> you know, so so we, at first we're like, let it feel like if someone said like, it's like a, a title feeler. Yeah. But we're like, this is actually quite cool. Because someone asked me, so what are you guys calling the album? They're like, Bald Men Love Better. First of all, it's a laugh. Then like, wow, that's so cool. So, and so like, I told him that I think the, 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 the EP is... Uh, but also when you get into um, the, the, what, what is be, what's behind the, 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 the concept itself is quite deep. The philosophy, you know, it's all about self-worth. And it doesn't matter whether you're bald or not, but you should be uh, proud of yourself. You should take care of yourself. You should be proud of your looks. Well, I mean, we celebrate kinky hair, but we rarely celebrate bald hair or those who don't have hair. And why, why should we not celebrate them? 
So for once it's an anthem for, for them and for every other person to feel good about. Yeah, 100%. And, 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 and so the Bowman anthem was the last song we recorded for the EP. And that one, we didn't do it live because now it's in New York. And so we just traded sessions, you know. And then I was here in uh, late July, all of August, to now do the videos. And that's when we actually recorded the bulk of uh, the Ballman anthem. And that one really is like the, the, the way tunes are done, pop tunes, we get a producer. And it's co-produced by with Joe Mutoria, a fantastic producer. And a shout out also to those to all the, the people who took part in the record. You know, like the players, Asa Fuzele uh, on bass, there's uh, Benjamin Kabaseke on guitars, Christian Kimbamba on, 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 on drums, and of course Zinia Manasse is and Lisa Noah are the our singers. They're the ones who are backing backing vocals, you know. So it and it just has worked out so well. It's such a fun project to do. And and the thing about the record is like it it has tastes of all our worlds. So you'll find some songs where I'm stretching out more, which is more into my world. You'll find the songs that are a bit more pop, that are his world. And then you'll find some songs that are right there in the middle. So we're like, so and there's a Ballman too. Really? That's why I'm here also. I think it's such a great project. And um, the last question, question before I let you go, what would you say is the secret to longevity? It's just like you were living in Kenya, w working in Kenya, gigging in Kenya. Now you're living and working and gigging in, in, um, in, the new, in New York. And that didn't really stop you from um, keeping in touch with your you know, counterparts, long-term collaborators and friends, and even working with BN. And that's quite inspiring because people tend to move to different places and sort of forget where they came from or start new um, relationships and forget others or forget to collaborate with people back at home, but that's not really like um, what you're up to. In fact, nobody really um, knew so much that Aaron wasn't there. Like there's an assumption that you are here. And that's why I had to reiterate today, like Aaron just jetted in for this. Yeah, I, th I think one of the greatest quotes that I had was from Yusundu. He said that the, the, the people who build you, especially as musicians, are your people. And from, I moved to the US when I was 38. So majority of my life, no, I've just been there for four years. So what I'd built is from Kenya. So it will take me years to get what I'd already cultivated. Yes, there are reasons as to why I moved there. That being said, however, I, I always felt that I cannot, I, I just have to, and Kenya, my, the, the talent is just, you can't ignore it. You know, uh, you know, I listen to what, what Saudi Soul, how, how they've, they've brought, how they've brought back, back Roomba. I'm like, Wait, what? Because I'm a Roomba head. Like, I've got those those small LPs, those 78s. I still have them. Yeah. So I'm like, these guys have actually, you know, so I'm like, I have to um, um, stay, real, stay, stay in touch, you know. And also, you know, as I said, I'm 42. Uh, there's a whole generation of, music, of, of, of artists who don't know who I am, you know. And, and those who knew me, because probably of shows like TPF, TPF was one. That's going to eight years ago. So, so there's a whole generation of guys who don't know who I am. So, so for me, even this in itself is a re-entry into people, you know, uh, who 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 uh, who are because 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 Saudi souls listeners are way younger than those those who listen to me. Now they've got 18 year olds listening to them, and it, so for me, even the comments, guys are like, "Who is he?" So I'm like, oh, "Yeah, yeah." So for me, and for me, that doesn't make me feel bad. It's just that I'm older and there's a new generation of musicians yeah. who don't know who I am. Yeah. It so, makes you feel good because you're spreading your music to more 100%. people. Yeah, it's a bigger, you know, the platform that, that, that BN and Saudi Soul have built yeah. is, is, is enormous. So, and so for me, that's, that's what keeps me relevant. Like stay in touch and listen to what the younger guys are doing. And I've heard some of the greatest artists do that. Jay-Z. Jay Z was is exactly is ten years older than me. He's fifty two, but why do we still talk about him? You know, look at look at all the hip hop artists who are many of them who started out when he was there. Many of them just they maybe still be doing stuff, but no one talks about them. So, uh, but it's just to you know stay stay in touch with the with the with the with the with the pals and the yeah. yeah. What do you want to tell um, artists out there who are very unique in what they do, the type of music they do? It's not really um, the typical mainstream music. It might not be pop necessarily. Um, and they want to stick to it. And there's challenges here and there of how to, um, 
how to stay focused you know you're one person who stayed focused um with the genre that you represent that you love and you made it out quite successful um you know what would you like to tell them i'd first say that um you have to love what you want you have to love what you do because that love is what makes you wake up and say that this is what i want to do so if you don't love it or you're just in between so now later, you know, you have to really like what you're doing. Love, like to the point, like, I really dig this, you know. And then number two, um, find out people who can, who support what you do. And many may not understand it, but, you can, but that's room to explain to them. Because those, the, those are the nuts and bolts of the music business, you know. Because there's the hype and everyone, we, we, you know, the, the lights, camera, action, you know, that, that, that comes with especially pop music. And then number two, um, if you decide to stick to it, um, do research. Find out wh where, where people can consume your art. You know, the world is, 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 an, is, is an oyster. Like, if this place doesn't work, look for other places. Move to another country. You're like, no one is restricting you. Yeah. No one is keeping you here. Yeah. Go somewhere else. If this place, you find that it's, it's a bit, the, the, the market is not, you know, it's because after all is said and done, it's a business too. So you need to go where you, 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 you're going to get value. And if, if two places work, well and good. You can, so, so find out where, where, where you think, and that's where the research comes in. And then number three, work extra hard. Meaning, like, don't be afraid to fail. Do those gigs where you come home, you're broke, like you're almost draining your accounts to pay. Like, go through the motions. There are some things that you learn, and that's what makes you choose what you're going to do. I used to do a show called All That Jazz. Oh my God, it was so cool. <laughs> All that just a couple of years back, yeah. And many times, actually, the majority of the times, I never made money. But it's because of the love of the culture. And I created that, that, that platform, All That Jazz, because I wanted a place for, for people to come and hear me. And then I started, remember when I used to collaborate with them? They used to come and, and yeah. So these collaborations had actually been going on. So, so create your own platforms and make noise about what you do so that people can come and hear and you just never know. There may be that guy who just comes and likes your stuff and the rest is history. Thank you so much, Aaron. And I wish you well in all your endeavors. And I'm just like following, I'm a fan. Like, I'm such a fan. Let me, she is a culture builder. She's been a teacher. It's called stick-to-itiveness. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you so much, Aaron.